Well, on the slow side, but it'll get the job done. These MTD chassis with the FNR transmissions in them, they are all over the place, everywhere. This one was a freebie. I end up with probably five or six of them for free on the side of the road every year. Almost every junkyard in America has at least three or four of these for free or for like 20 bucks. Now the key to this is the FNR transmission in the rear. All right, I just wanted to explain for five seconds how this FNR shifter works because then that way you understand when we tilt this up 90 degrees. So forward, neutral, reverse. Now I'm gonna have John show you where it actually does it in the transmission. So right now it's in neutral. Forward is this direction, neutral, and then reverse. Neutral, forward, neutral, reverse. Everybody always wants a go-kart that has reverse, and that's our goal today. The other thing I'll point out is this particular style of steering that these MTDs have. So if we have John take a look at this, the big thing is this clockable steering that's right here for building the go-kart steering. It is a square hub, so we should be able to clock this to either direction in order to be able to have the go-kart steering going this way in the front. Now, if we have John come over and take a look at this setup, this looks a little overcomplicated, and that's because it needs to be simplified. So the way that an FNR system works is that you have this variable pulley, and when the belt to the front of the machine gets pulled, it makes this contract, which makes this get bigger, which makes this turn faster. That's the five second version. Now, if we eliminate this variable pulley and we put in a centrifugal clutch pulley, this is a LabWorks knockoff of the actual Stens pulley. So the LabWorks right now are selling for about $45 a piece. The actual honest to God Stens one is about $140 a piece. So we're gonna see if the cheapskate one will end up working for us for this project. So let me get that pop back on there. There we go. So the key to this is that we're going to eliminate the very drive. Sit this belt like this and then put it over the top of that Maybe use this as an idler tensioner from this direction. And there we go. We should have our drivetrain, forward, neutral, reverse, and brakes. Those of you who know lawn tractors are going to point out that this isn't exactly a stock part. This is because this is an experimental tractor that we built like five or six years or so ago for John to run around on. We made a 24 volt set up and we had lawn tractor batteries in here we tried upgrading it to 36 volts but these chinesium controllers just could not take the amperage coming out of the batteries and they kept frying one right after another but it did actually work when it was in 24 volts we used a coupler that we made which you should be able to see focus let's try this we made a coupler right there and that went to one of these Chinese motors that we ordered off of Amazon I think this was a 300 watt if I remember right today's episode of what should work versus what actually works what should work on getting the steering column out of this is one of these large impact Phillips bits on the bottom what actually works is a good set of vice grips held right on and have somebody twist the steering wheel while you're holding it. There we go, down to frame. John's getting it all cleaned off. 
I need to take out the electrical experiment in the back and do a bunch of measurements and then we'll be back. John, did I say you could take a break? Yes. Yes? What are you doing? I'm going through the cars. Where'd these come from? Mark. What do you say to Mark? Thank you. Which one's the coolest in the group? The funny car. The funny car is the coolest? What was the what was the plane thing you showed me? It's the oldest car. I can actually tell how old it is just by recognizing it. Oh yeah, that's pretty cool. In the sea rescue plane. Mm, it's from it's from 1998. This is the brake slash clutch assembly, which just is held on by two bolts on either side. And I just wanted to show you how universally able to be put into place this is so really if you wanted to you could probably just move this forward and then use this as your brake over the top just put a pull cable on it to the brakes i'm gonna probably decide to use this and make a couple of pivot points on it for gas and brake but just pointing out there's multiple ways you could repurpose this kind of custom idea it really would not take very much to template this and drill a couple of holes on either side and just move this whole thing forward. Yep. That is supposed to be humped in this direction. But, D-Hub Rim. These things suck. Yet again, it's a really good thing that they're free all over the side of the road. We're gonna go pick the scrap pile. Find a set of these we got for free. There we go. We need to break off all of that, but we're just going to call this a happy little accident, the fact that that other set of tires gave out. These ones here are off a uh, bug-looking Yardman style, the ones with the yellow plastic hoods. And they're actually better tires than what were on there before, so bonus. Alright, I did this part with a regular grinder, even though a plasma cutter would have been way faster. But I just wanted to prove and show you can do it with just a basic $15 grinder. Now what we've done on the end of this is we took one of these from an old MTD and we templated it. We made these 5 inches long to drop it down just a little bit to get the axle below the frame. And we had to cut out for this. One thing we found out when we built the original gas powered power wheel was that these brake calipers on these MTD transaxles can actually be flipped to go to the underside. Which means that you can pull brake from the underside of the transmission. So this is going to go like this and lift up on and We'll get welded in right about like that. This Yes Welder helmet would not recommend, do not like. This 140 Fournay on the other hand, do every single day recommend for somebody who needs an entry level welder for doing this kind of stuff. I'll post a link for that in the description. I swear by this thing for all kinds of outdoor use and repairs. Once you get it dialed in, you know, the welds aren't perfect. But I'll take it for a cheap welder. So there we go. That's all blocked up. That's all put in there. We got this side all welded in. As you can see right here. So I set in some weld up across here to gusset that just a little bit. Once everything is all settled in, the one problem here is we cut this piece out. And this is what makes the rigid part across the back. So I think once all is said and done, I may or may not make a piece that drops down and comes across right in here and over to shore up the rear. I'm also debating whether inside of this rail here, if I should maybe put a cross member 
maybe weld it in right in here. But as it is now, we need to bolt the top plate back on, which is going to make it a lot stronger, which just having this welded up has made everything way stronger anyway. But we're going to put the top plate back on, and then we'll be able to set the engine on top and sort it out from there. By the way, while John sits here trying to get this brake pedal back on so we can use it to make a handbrake, and he picks out what choice words a nine-year-old is allowed to use, make sure you throw a comment down below. The algorithm honestly does not care whether you like the video. It doesn't really seem to care how long you watch the video for. What it really cares about and whether it promotes the video and helps us as YouTubers or Facebook video creators is whether you comment down below. So John, tell them what to do. Comment down below. Interesting little side note here. It turns out the bolts that are in the end of these MTD axles are the exact same thread pattern as these little buggers. So I didn't have to go buy one today. Bonus for freebies. I actually bought this longer plate for this project, but it's some knockoff brand Azuku something or other plate. And I'm gonna end up using this old school OMB warehouse plate. And this thing is just bulletproof, thick, and I think if I score these with a grinder, I can get that to sit right flat in between them and go underneath the sheet metal. So we minimize what we have to modify and whatever with the rear sheet metal. Before I weld things together a little bit, just wanted to go and walk around where we've got it lined up. It's just kind of a balancing act up there. We've got about a 42 inch, half inch belt on here right now, just for mocking it up. Now, one side note we might have to reconsider or think on here is that originally this would have had an idler that went this way with a V idler, pulling this outward. But really, we want it to wrap around that as tight as possible. So what we really should do is flat idler it coming in this way, pulling it in. So we might have to find a flat idler in the junkyard. But otherwise than that, I'm going to double and triple check measurements. The other thing we've done is we've set this up with two washers behind here for spacing. So that, that way we can bring it in or bring it out just a little bit if need be for alignment afterwards. So we're going to weld it up and drill it out, get it bolted in place. Also, need to debate maybe a gusset or two from here to here. I mean, obviously I got to do something, but I like this being removable. So I haven't figured out exactly what I should do there. We got the Dural Max motor attached to the frame. We attached a go-kart clutch. And this is how it works. It, it's going to go around, go to a flat pulley, to then go, go back to the go-kart clutch. So, so that pulls on the idler pulley in order to keep compression here. And we've got it a little bit too tight right now. But we can put in a link or two in between this in order to change that. Really, in all honesty, what we should have is we should have a loop with some threaded rod or something like that so that we can change the tension here, which is what I'll weld in later. This was just a quick piece of scrap that I found in order to get this up and running. We've got our gas in the on position. we got our choke over here to start. We've got it down to the slowest speed right now. So we'll be able to pump the throttle. And we've got our booster pack hooked up. We'll see what happens. Now, just so you know, it should be in neutral right now. But this is a really used transmission, so I may or may not have it in neutral. But let's see if we can get it started. 
and go from there. I'll take fires up first, try. Alright, while well, we got it in neutral, we're going to see if this will engage. concept what we're on the bench take one now we uh now we gotta get tires on it and figure out a shifter steering gas and brakes not much of a list <laughs> i get asked about these mtd steering wheels quite often so i'm gonna put it in this video for you people that are building one of these see how this still has the steering column piece off the dash on it and it still has well if it would move right there still has the gear and everything on it screws that's because the easiest way to get these stupid steering wheels off is to put them in a vise like this to get about an inch and a half long 5 16 coarse thread thread it in a hammer and some sort of punch. This is my custom deck spindle punch that I use. I like using these because it protects my hand from getting hit. And say a prayer to whatever deity you believe in and hope it pops out. Otherwise than that, that's about the only way these things come off. I don't know about the rest of you, but steering is the one thing that I dread having to sort out, so I don't tend to modify it much. Alright, so the first thing I wanted to point out is that a piece of cast iron pipe from the hardware store and some old 5 8 bearings out of some rims, and you've got carrier bearings for your steering column shaft. Nice, simple, easy... Tons of racers build it that way every year in America. Now, the thing is, what we need is we need a pillar coming up and then over, connecting to this, so that as you turn this to the right, it turns this this way in order to turn to the right. Now, this is the mangled, what in the world was somebody thinking, steering, that was on this poor little MTD. Now, I didn't realize it was done like this, so it is what it is. But originally, what my goal was, was knowing that was there, was that I was going to take that, and I was going to weld it on the end of there, and then I was going to shorten this up and put it right in there, and that would have given me my direct steering for my go-kart build. But... Since this is mangled and unusable, what I've got here is the link bar for Cub Cadet steering out of the junkyard. So we stole one of the link bars. 
These are quite common in steering for a lot of your MTD, slightly bigger machines nowadays. So if I come back here, I've got this piece and that piece I can weld right on there to have our top piece. And then I can shorten it up and I can have this right in here. And we should be able to have our direct link steering. Alright, now that we have John in an awkward position, we're working on getting these tacked into place. So what we chose to do was we chose to set it at just about John's eye height right now. Because if we put a seat or a pad or anything, it's going to lift him up just a little bit. And the reality is he's growing. And he's the shortest person that might be riding this thing. So as we come back here, you can see there's plenty of room between his head and the back. It wouldn't take very much to take these out and weld some sort of headboard or something right here with a pad on the front. And that was my welding clamp letting go. So there we are. Progress? Yeah! Okay, test one on steering assembly. Go ahead, John. Okay. That turns pretty quick. How hard is that to turn? It's a little hard, but... Okay, it'll be easy when it's in, when it's in motion and stuff. Okay, so we got that figured out. So last on the list, in order to take it for a test drive, we probably won't get the shifter done today because John's got to go and head to his mom's house in a little while. But what we're going to try and do is figure out some sort of quick gas pedal, and we need to figure out a quick brake system. So off camera, we're going to build the brake. So... Here is the original foot brake. Now, John, put your hand on it. If John goes back and forth with that, what we can see is up in underneath here, we can see this piece moving. So we've got that spot right there that, given a piece of bar, should be able to come back and go right there onto that brake handle. Right there. And that should give us at least basic pull brakes. I'll probably have to attach a spring from there back just to make sure that it doesn't monkey around on us, but that should work. In the interest of getting this project done, I have this gas pedal that was made for my diesel dragster over on RCG Racing. This is just a generic quick little thrown together ATV cable gas pedal, just runs up through uses a retainer off of just about any generic Briggs and Stratton. Got it running through there with a pinch point. That is just a regular spring from Tractor Supply, nailed down right there. Should be good to go. Cause right now my diesel is off of my dragster because it needs a rebuild. It's a herding unit. And people always argue whether you can port and polish these heads. So I think we should try it over on Redneck Computer Geek here. Well, John, we got brakes, we got gas, we can steer. There's a body on it, kind of. Is it driving time? Yes! All right, let's go take it for a test drive. So we're going to get rolled off of here. Is it me, or does it have, like, dune buggy vibes? That's what I think. And yes, I know this is pretty in pink and it is ugly, but I wanted to have a foot catch of some sort on here just so we could get it out for a quick test run. Eventually, we want like headlights and hooking up the charging circuit and ignition and all of that stuff. So we'll get to that point. All right, here we go. We're going to test it. We didn't get a chance to get the shifter mechanism fully done, but basically we just need to take the shifter that was on it, turn it 90 degrees and run a rod up to the front. Simple enough. We don't know which way on it is forward or reverse, so we're gonna try it. We should be in neutral right now. So let's get it started. Give it a rest. 
down. You should be in neutral. Okay, one off. Okay, so I'm going to shift it that direction. Okay, lightly see what you're in. Nope, that's reverse. Brake works. Good. Watch where you're going. All right, learning experience I want to pass on. That clutch does not seem to actually engage until it's almost at about 2,000 or so RPM. So with this thing currently maxing out at 3,600, there's a very small 1,000 RPM window or so that seems to be going on. So we definitely need a carb upgrade, maybe some exhaust, some other stuff. Get the RPMs up more into like four grand and this thing would definitely go pretty good. easy slope we never put any gas in. apparently they didn't put gas in John, why don't you line it up and let's see if you can burn rubber down. Okay, whenever you're ready, go for it. Yeah, that gear ratio is just is what it is. But he's faster than walking, that's for sure. So he's going to try and do the easier side of the ATV trail around here that we test the mud mowers on. No problem there. There's a bunch of mole hills through here. Hi, I can't keep up. He's going faster than I can go. Oh, there's off the tree. pretty good against my better judgment John wants to try the harder section of the trail around the house 
right now this thing I, as you can see in the video is flexing like this and these things tend to snap in half really easy I'm gonna let him try it but really in all honesty I wouldn't recommend doing it till you have a reinforcement bar underneath this thing okay John I'll meet you over in the corner go ahead All right, there are a lot of really deep whoop de doos in here, so we'll see if it holds together. There's a giant rock ahead, so he's got to get up on the left-hand side. means he's got to plan ahead a lot more. Not something he's used to. Yeah, man, right over that easy enough. There you go. 